<laughs> Welcome to the interview, special interview with Professor John Wells. Uh, Professor Wells, welcome back to Kochi. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. <laughs> you came here two years ago uh, on the occasion of the first international conference of the fun editions of English, and again last year, your special lecture and the workshop. Welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Again. Uh, I'm happy to be here yet again. <laughs> I uh, have it. Enjoyed my previous visits, and I'm sure I shall enjoy this one as well. Okay. Professor Wells, you have uh, so many titles: emeritus professor of uh, UCL, fellow of the British Academy, former president of the International Political Association, former president of the British Association of Academic Politicians, <laughs> former president of the World Esperanto Association, president of the Simplified Spelling Society, president of the British. This Grand Association of Britain, so many titles. <laughs> well, I've told you that I can't say no. <laughs> People say, will you be our president? And so I sometimes do. Uh, yes, then, these are all things I'm interested in. Uh, after all, I have been Professor of Phonetics in the University of London until I retired last year, so uh, that carries with it more or less the obligation to uh, serve on bodies like the British Association of Academic Phoneticians, who were kind enough to elect me for several years. Uh, I don't, on the whole, go around seeking offices of this type, but if members of an association propose me, then I'm willing to accept it, so that's really what we've done here. Simplified Spelling Society, I've never taken an active role at all in this society, but my predecessor as Professor of Phonetics, Daniel Jones, was uh, president of the Simplified Spelling Society, then my predecessor, A.C. Gibson, was, and he told me this is more or less a duty of the Professor of Phonetics, so I've been happy to take, out, take over as Professor, as, sorry, as President of the Simplified Spelling Society, and indeed I think it's a good thing, I think it would be an excellent idea to simplify our spelling, but that's another issue. <laughs> okay. I, I choose to you have been invited to many uh, countries in the world. What, uh, what, what, are, what are some of the countries you have been Well, I'm just showing these pictures of uh, <laughs> China with the pandas and so on. That's where I was in May, I think it was this year. Uh, earlier this year, I've also been on a lecture tour of Italy, visiting various places in uh, the north of Italy. Uh, I also went to uh, Germany earlier this year, to Berlin. That's, I think, all this year, but I'm coming back to Japan next month <laughs> to uh, Tokyo, to Senshu University. And, uh, well, over the years, I've visited many different countries because people are kind enough to invite me. Uh, I'm the author of various books. You've got information there about my intonation book last year. I'm also the author of the Longman Pronunciation Dictionary. And that means that publishers are sometimes willing to sponsor visits overseas. Uh, I must say I enjoy doing them, so I tend to accept these invitations. Longman sent me to South America, for example, to Buenos Aires in Argentina, and to Santiago de Chile in Chile. Longman also sent me to India, to Delhi, Madras, uh, Chennai, Bombay, and Calcutta. So that's a wonderful thing, and I'm very grateful to everybody who's made it possible for me to travel like this. This time, you, you were invited to Kansai Gaida University, and you taught a uh, series of uh, well, lectures. Yeah, I did a, 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 a week's teaching, yes. really, of MA students, master students at Kansai Gaida. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very hard work, actually, because I had to teach them for six hours or so every day. We started at 9.30, we finished at 4, and, uh, well, with breaks, but that was a fairly intensive bit of work then, mostly about English intonation, but also some general ear training and some uh, English phonetics and so on. Very enjoyable. Yes. So, we are very grateful to Professor Toyota of Kansai Gaida University, the Dean of the Graduate School of Kansai Gaida University, the Director of the Intercultural the Research Institute of Kansagara University. He invited, Kansagara University invited him there 
last week. That's why he was able to come here and to coach too. So we are very grateful to Kasei Kato. Yes. That's, that's it. They are his main sponsors. Well, um, you have been at UCL, teaching at UCL for over 40 years and have been the director of the summer course in the 20 years. Uh, no, I'm retired. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about 40 years? Okay, well, uh, I <laughs> came to UCL in London as a postgraduate because I wanted to study phonetics. Uh, and that's when Gibson and Fry and O'Connor were professors there. Well, they weren't yet. O'Connor wasn't a professor, but he shortly became one. And uh, I was fascinated with phonetics, so I was very obsessed, really, with it, and studied as hard as I could. When I finished my master's degree, they said to me, would you like to uh, be an assistant lecturer? So I didn't actually apply for the job. They offered it to me, which was very gratifying. So I said yes. And in fact, I've stayed in the same place through my entire career, being gradually promoted until I was a full professor of phonetics. And now, last year at this time, I retired. So now I'm a retired professor of phonetics, but still connected to, to UCL, which is, of course, the biggest and uh, most important center of phonetics in the United Kingdom. Now, I think that people in general have a conception of phonetics is a study of pronunciation. Yes, it is, but uh, could you briefly describe what phonetics is? What kind of function? Well, yeah, it's a study of pronunciation, a study of the human ability to pronounce. And uh, so it covers many areas. I mean, computerized speech, automatic speech recognition, speech synthesis, this is an important modern application of this. When you uh, telephone, perhaps a cinema chain, and you want to know what is on at the cinema, you get an automatic response, and it's all done by speech recognition and speech synthesis without human intervention. Uh, there are more human applications of phonetics in the training of, for example, speech and language therapists, who have to have a good ability to recognize speech sounds so as to be able to uh, assess what's wrong with patients that they're dealing with. Now, actors are interested in doing various different kinds of dialects and so on. Uh, people studying foreign languages need to know about the phonetics of the various foreign languages they want to study. So all of these are applications of phonetics. Uh, personally, I'm interested in it really for its own sake as a, as a study. And in that sense, academically, it forms part of linguistics one particular branch of linguistics as a theoretical attempt to explain what it is that human beings are capable of when we are capable of language. One of the things that we can do is talk and pronounce language. So we need to understand what's going on, what we have in our genetic makeup, in our brains that enables us to do this uh, and to model it. I'm trying to apply knowledge and skills of phonetics in the teaching of English in Japan. Uh, could you, <laughs> as a scholar, as a phonetician, you know the phonetics of many different languages, you know Japanese very well. Phonetics, uh, yes. <laughs> what are some of the weak points of Japanese languages in the English? Well, I think perhaps you're better placed than I am to, to answer this, but uh, let's see what they are. First of all, there are the problems that arise when from the phonetics of Japanese, the syllable structure, which is typically consonant and vowel, with no final consonant and no consonant clusters. You have one or two possibilities for final consonants, but not much, nothing nearly as much as English, and you don't have anything like the English consonant cluster. So that's going to be a problem for all learners. Secondly, rhythm. The Japanese has this mora-based rhythm. Da -da 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 English, on the other hand, has a stressed rhythm, where what you hear stress syllables at roughly equal intervals. This is interference, of course, from Japanese in English. Uh, other problems are really perhaps more psychological. 
the Japanese people have a very high standard which they set for themselves, which means that they're afraid to open their mouths because they might make a mistake. So in a sense, the standard is too high. It's better to talk, even if you don't do everything perfectly, than not to talk at all because you're afraid you might do this. We have, in fact, the opposite problem with our Spanish learners of English, who tend to be very voluble. They speak all the time. They talk and talk and talk, but very badly. <laughs> <laughs> so if we could get your aim of correctness with the Spanish readiness to speak, that would be wonderful. That's right. Japanese are uh, notorious you know, for being shy. <laughs> That's right. So we, we shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes. I think there's also the problem that your language teaching in schools tends to be very writing oriented, so that you know how to read and write English, but you're not very good at speaking it. I mean, I've been appalled when I've met Japanese students who have studied English for 10 years. And I ask some simple question like, what did you do today? And they can't answer. <laughs> that, that, all, that really is a failure of teaching, because any teacher ought to teach people to react to that kind of simple question. That's right. Most teachers here teach reading and writing, grammar, OK, not much speaking and listening. So here, teachers, please. <laughs> Begin teaching, speaking, listening, in addition to reading and writing. Drop your script. <laughs> One of the things you have to be careful of in a radio studio is scripts and script noise, because if you allow the papers to rustle, that sounds very bad over the microphone, so you have to keep them still and uh, not move them. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to begin this lecture session in about uh, two minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor John Miles. Please give him a big hand. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we'll now be a three minute intermission, two and a half minute intermission. Two and a half, two and a half yeah. minutes. Okay. Any questions now? We have two minutes to ask questions. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Daniel Jones. Uh, probably the first international conference of politics was held in Tokyo in 1960. I attended. And actually, we had the uh, recorded voice of Daniel Jones. And next, uh, A.C. Gimson was actually died at the, 60, at the age of 67, very young. And will you tell us something about Daniel Jones and A.C. Gimson? Oh, yes. <laughs> we could have a complete lecture on that, couldn't we? Daniel Jones was the pioneer of phonetics in Britain. He set up the department at UCL. Uh, when I met him, he was a very, very old man. Uh, but he was still very interested in phonetics. He wanted to check me out when I was appointed as an assistant lecturer to make sure that I was all right, uh, suitably knowledgeable about phonetics. So he made me sit down. He gave me a sheet of paper on which was a phonetic transcription of Hindi, a passage of Hindi transcribed in phonetics. And he said, off you go. And of course, I didn't know Hindi, but I had to follow the phonetic transcription, which I did to the best of my ability. And I'd been well taught to make the appropriate sounds for Hindi or indeed any language. So I passed that test. A.C. Gibson was a, a very convivial character, very good with people. Uh, he often gave the impression of not being very scholarly, which was nonsense, because he was so good at you know, parties and being friends to people and making them feel good. So that means that our department of phonetics and linguistics has always been a very friendly department. It's not got the kinds of animosity, enmity, which you find in some academic circles. On the contrary, we all support one another. We're all friends. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank so you. You, you're the successor of A.C. Gimson, I understand. Correct, yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Except as I'm now retired, so <laughs> someone else takes over from me. Turn.